everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brittany of BrittanyJJones.com. If this is your first time tuning in to one of my videos, welcome. I hope that you will like what you see and subscribe below for more. In today's video, we're gonna be sewing, yay! <laughs> we're gonna be sewing up McCall's 7936 jumpsuit in this video. This is one of their learn to sew for fun patterns, so it is designed for beginners. So if you uh, wanna start making a jumpsuit or you're a little bit nervous, then I would definitely recommend a pattern like this that is designed to help beginners walk through the steps a little bit easier. Um, I didn't have any problems sewing it up. I used a linen to create mine. If you wanna see the preview video I made for it where I went over the supplies that I purchased, the size that I'll be cutting. I also showed you how I merged the pattern lines between the large and the extra large to get it to fit my body a little bit better. So if you want to see all of that, you can click right here to check out that video. So once you have your pattern piece cut out as well as your fabric, you've transferred all of your notches and markings, we can get started. To begin working on our jumpsuit, we're going to take a front and a back, put it right size facing. So here's my front piece here and here is a back and I have them right sides facing. We are going to stitch at this inside leg seam, so we're gonna stitch our inseam together. But before I stitch mine, I want to go ahead and finish off my raw edges with my serger. I'm gonna go ahead and do that for the other front and back piece as well. And then I'm also going to finish off this center seam because that's the next step that we're gonna be moving to after we stitch this inner leg seam. So I'm gonna to go to my serger now and just finish off all of my raw edges. Now that I have my edges finished with my serger, I have pinned them right sides facing. So I have my front to back right sides and I have the inside leg seam pinned together. I'm gonna to go ahead to my machine now and stitch it at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. Okay, now that you have your inside leg seam sewn, now we can go to our ironing board and go ahead and press this seam open flat. So I'm gonna go to my ironing board right now and go ahead and press. All right, so I have both of my inner leg seams pressed and I normally press right here on camera so you all can see, but my mats are starting to warp a little bit. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and press off camera and then I'm um, just come back here and show you that I have pressed it. So again, now that I have it pressed, I'm gonna go ahead and put right sides facing for my front and back pieces. Match up these inner leg seams, pin in place, Okay, so I have my back pieces all pinned. Now for the front, we're gonna pin up to this large circle that you should have transferred. And we're gonna stop there because we need to leave this front open for our zipper. So I'm just gonna pin to my large circle here. All right, so now that I have it all pinned, I'm gonna go to the sewing machine. I'm gonna stitch it at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance, being sure to start right here this large circle to leave this front open. And then right here between our notches only, I'm going to stitch again at a quarter of an inch seam allowance, right in here just to reinforce this uh, curve right here, this crotch curve. So let's go ahead and do all of our stitching now. <laughs> Okay, so I have my center seam sewn and I left the front open. So now let's go ahead and start inserting our zipper. Before we insert it, I do want to show you that I did fuse a about a 5 8 of an inch strip of um, interfacing right here, just along the front. Let me show you what it looks like. Right here on both sides, right above this little marking where our zipper is going to go. I have seen a lot of um, amazing bloggers mention that it's good to stabilize zipper insertion areas. So that is what I've done here. So after we install the zipper on the inside of our garment, you won't be able to see the interfacing. It'll be up under the zipper. So I just wanted to show you that I did go ahead and do a little bit of stabilizing for my zipper area. So now here's my zipper and my zipper is longer. I don't know why we needed to buy a 22 inch zipper because we don't need this whole 22 inch zipper. What I'm going to do though, I'm just going to 
keep my tail so I don't have to shorten it. So I'm gonna keep this at the bottom and I'm just gonna start mine from the top. Now, if you have the right size zipper, you wanna make sure that you have this zipper stop three eighths of an inch down from this top edge so that you can get your facing on there. So I'm just going to not shorten it. I'm just going to cut off the top of it. But again, the choice is yours. You can keep your top intact like that and trim off the bottom to shorten it. Or you can just trim off the top when that time comes to attach the facing. I'm gonna make sure though that I do have my zipper stop a little bit below this opening right here. And I'm just gonna put pins in it. Okay, once you have one side of the zipper pin, we can go ahead and go to our sewing machine and stitch it down. I'm not gonna use an invisible zipper um, foot. I'm just gonna use a regular zipper foot and I'm going to be moving these coils over to the side so I can stitch right here beside the zipper teeth. So I'm gonna go to the machine now and go ahead and stitch this side of the zipper in. <laughs> Okay, so I have one side of the zipper installed. I'm gonna go ahead and zip it up like the pattern says so that we can pan the other side of the zipper tape in place. Make sure that your tops are even, the top of your jumpsuit is even up here. I'm gonna put a couple of pins there to hold that in place. Okay, now as you have it pinned in place, I'm going to unzip it Now we can take it to the machine and stitch the other side of the zipper tape in place. All right, so I have both sides of the zipper installed. So now, moment of truth, let's zip it up and see how it looks. All right, that looks like a good invisible zipper to me. Looks really, really good. So now I'm gonna flip it to the inside. And if you want to cover the bottom edge of your zipper, um, your zipper, then you can cut off a little piece of bias tape or uh, scrap fabric and just stitch that across to just give that a nice finish. Um, but I'm also going to stitch the ends of my zipper tape all the way down just so it's not flopping around in my dress. If you do have a little bit of a gap right here, an opening from where you stop your zipper stitching to where that circle is, then you can just close that up just a little bit. Make sure that you don't go too far away from that seam allowance, but just close that gap up so that it's a nice clean seam. So I'm gonna go ahead and stitch the zipper ends to the zipper tape only. I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Okay y'all, so again, here is the inside of my zipper. I went ahead and stitched down the ends of the zipper tape so they're not flopping around in here. Um, remember, you can always add some bias tape or scrap fabric if you want to cover that. So here's an, again, an inside look at it. And this is the zipper. From the outside, we just need a good press and we have a nice, clean, installed zipper. So now let's move on to working on our pockets. So here are my four pockets that I have cut out. I'm gonna go ahead to my serger and just finish off the edge of the pockets before I insert them onto the jumpsuit. So let's go ahead. If you want to, finish off the edges of your pockets now. All right, now that I have my pockets finished, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my jumpsuit and I'm going to pin one pocket to each side, so two for the back, two for the front. You wanna make sure that they are right sides facing. You also wanna match up this notch and the markings that you have transferred. Okay, now that I have all four of my pockets pinned, I'm gonna stitch them at a quarter of an inch seam allowance, and then I'm also gonna go ahead and finish off the entire side seam of my jumpsuit with my serger. So again, go ahead and stitch your pockets in place at a quarter of an inch seam allowance, and if you want to finish off those side seams, go ahead and finish those off with your serger now. <laughs> Okay, so I have my pockets installed. I've also pressed them going toward the seam. So now I'm going to put the jumpsuit right sides facing, line up the side seams as well as the pockets and begin to pin in place.
You also should have transferred some markings. Mine are kind of disappearing, but I can see where I originally put them. So I'm just gonna go over those markings right there. Okay, so now that I have the side seam pinned, I'm gonna go to my machine. I'm gonna begin stitching right up here at the underarm, and I'm gonna come right here to this first marking. I'm going to back stitch and cut my threads. I'm gonna begin stitching right here at this other marking so we can keep our pocket open. And I'm gonna stitch from there all the way to the hem of the jumpsuit. I'm gonna come back and stitch around the jumpsuit pocket to close our pocket up. And then just to reinforce this underarm area, I'm going to stitch again right along the previous stitching just to reinforce it. So let's go ahead and do all of that stitching now. Okay, now that we have the side seam sewn, we've also sewn our pocket. We've done our reinforced stitch up under our underarm. Now we need to clip our pockets above the pockets and below the pocket. I'm just gonna click on my back, clip on my back seam allowance. It doesn't notate on the pattern which one to clip. I'm not gonna clip both. And the reason I'm just gonna clip the back is because that is what I see a lot of on other patterns that they only have you clip the back seam allowance. So here's my pocket. So I'm just gonna clip diagonally right here above it and below the pocket. Again, I'm only clipping the back seam allowance. You should not be clipping the front. You should not be clipping into your jumpsuit. And when you do that, you'll be able to open up your seam to give it a nice flat press. So I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. I'm gonna clip a little bit right here on the back and on above the pocket, above and below the pocket. So again, now I can press my seam out on the side seams. Okay, so now that we have the pockets clipped, we can go ahead and stitch our overarm seam together. I went ahead and finished my edges off with my serger. So now with right sides facing, I'm going to find my notch and pin them together. All right, now that we have our overarms pinned together, we can go ahead and stitch them at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance now. All right, so I have my overarm seam sewn. I've also pressed my seams open flat. While I was there, I did go ahead and press up my seam allowance for my sleeve. Our sleeves will be stitched at a 5 8 of an inch narrow hem. So once you have your 5 8 of an inch pressed up, you want to fold in that raw edge and then you want to stitch close to this inner fold. So let's go to our machine now and we can stitch our 5 8 of an inch hem for our sleeves. All right, so I have my narrow hem sewn in place for my sleeve, and I've given it a press. So now we can start working on our facing. So here are my facing pieces right here, and you can see that I've gone ahead and fused interface into the back of them. So right now we're going to put our facing pieces right sides facing. I'm going to pin up here at the shoulder of the facing should have a notch there as well. Now we can go to the machine. We can stitch these at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance and then press the seam flat and finish off the long edges of the facing. Okay, so I have my facing sewn together. I pressed the seam open and I also finished the edges off with my serger. So now let's go ahead and grab our jumpsuit. I'm going to unzip this just a little. And now with right sides facing, the right side of my jumpsuit is facing up, I'm going to put my facing over it. I'm going to match up my shoulder seams here and pin in place, making sure those seams are even. 
You should also have a notch right here that matches with the notch on the facing. Line those up and pin in place. I'm going to open up my zipper so that I can see the raw edge here and I'm going to line up my facing with that and pin it in place. I'm just going to continue pinning the facing all the way around the neck edge. So now I'm going to stitch all the way along the neckline at a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance. I'm also going to stitch right here, right along the zipper tape, being sure not to stitch on the zipper teeth, but right here I'm going to stitch right along the 5 8 of an inch so then we won't have to slip stitch it. Once it's sewn, we can just flip our line into the inside and we'll have a really nice clean finish right here along our zipper tape. So now let's go ahead and do our 5 8 of an inch stitch all the way along the neckline now. For the facing that's right along the zipper teeth, I'm going to snap my zipper foot back on just so I can get really close to the groove. Okay, so now that I have the facing sewn on, I'm going to do a little bit of trimming. So I'm just going to start right here at the front and just start trimming all the way around the facing. Okay, now that I have that neck seam trimmed down, I'm going to go back to the machine and do some understitching. With understitching, you want to make sure that your seam is facing toward your facing because we're only going to be sewing along the facing and the seam allowance. So make sure that your seam allowance is all going toward the facing, not toward your jumpsuit. And we're going to stitch close to this seam. The understitching is done to keep the facing from rolling out while you're wearing your garment. So make sure that you do your understitching now. Okay, so I have my facing understitched all the way along the neck edge. So now I'm going to turn this in and take a peek at the zipper and see if the front of this lines up or not. I haven't pressed the neck, um, the facing down just yet. I want to check first before I do my facing. And you can see that I am off. So I'm going to zoom in so you can get a closer look at uh, my zipper and where it's stopping. So if you look right here, the zipper on this side stops right here perfectly, but up here I have more zipper up here. So that is no bueno. <laughs> so I need to unzip this and I need for this to come down to this point so that it matches with the zipper when I close it. I need both points to meet here. So easy fix. I'm just going to come, wait, let me kind of mark that so I know um, how much I'm coming down. I can measure down. So this is the distance right here that I need to bring this down so that it is even right here. Okay, so I'm going to unzip this, come under this facing, grab it right here. So I'm just going to go to the machine and I'm just going to start here with my angle and bring it up here to this seam so that it blends. So again, I'm just going to bring it down here just a little and bring it up so that it meets this stitch right here. So I'm gonna to go to the machine and do that now and I'll be right back to show you what it looks like. Okay, so I am back from the machine. I just wanted to show you what I did. It's a lot of stitches here, I know. <laughs> this first one here was the original one and it was too high. So then I started here and I brought it up to meet the line, but it, I brought it up at a weird angle so it kind of curved. I flipped it out to look at it and it kind of curved. So I did it again took out a little bit of that understitching so I could come up further with that line. And so I just brought it more at a V angle here instead of that weird, I don't know what I did here. <laughs> um, so now I just need to trim this down, but first I want to flip it out so you all can see um, if it looks better now, if it lines up with the other side. So let's zip it up. So now, you can see here that it meets at a much better point and it's even, it, you remember it was up high so I had to bring it down. So yeah, super easy to do. If, you, if your zipper isn't meeting, then maybe you can come in a little bit more on that facing on the front um, to get it even. So no need to panic, just go back into your facing and do a little bit of adjusting until you get them to meet evenly. So now I'm gonna go back in here and trim off this excess right here 
and then we can move on to the next step. Okay, so I am back from pressing my facing down. So now I'm going to grab a needle and thread and I'm just gonna put a couple tacks right here to keep the facing from flopping on the inside. So just grab the needle and thread and just tack a little bit right here at the edge of the facing on both of the shoulder seams. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've put a couple tacks right here in my facing to hold that in place. The next step is for us to go ahead and do our hem. And our hem allowance is an inch and a quarter. So we're going to press up an inch and a quarter. Once you have that pressed up, you wanna go ahead and base close to this fold. And then we're gonna press up that quarter of an inch. So then our final hem would just be an inch. And then we're going to base along this fold. Once you have it basted, you can turn to the outside and then do your top stitch following along with that base. So let's go ahead and stitch our hem in place now. And again, the hem allowance is one and a quarter inch. All right, so I have my hem pressed up. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it so that the right side of my fabric is facing up and it will be stitched with the top needle, not the bobbin. Here's the inside of my hem. So now I'm gonna go ahead and stitch the other hem the same exact way. Okay, so I have both of my hems both stitched in place. So the last step for us to do, if you want to make a tie, you wanna go ahead and grab your tie piece. And it should be a piece back here with the notch. We're going to pin here. Take this to the machine and stitch this down at a 5 eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now that you have the center of the tie sewn, I've gone ahead and I pressed my seam open. So now I'm gonna fold the tie in half lengthwise with right sides facing. And I'm gonna put some pins in it. I'm gonna put a pin right here in the center so that I can leave an opening to flip it right side out. Then do the same thing on this side and continue pinning the rest. All right, now I'm gonna to go to the machine. I'm gonna stitch the tie. I'm gonna begin right here and stitch all the way to one end. And then I'm gonna begin here and stitch all the way to the other, being sure to leave this open so I can flip the tie right side out. So let's go ahead and stitch it now. Okay, now that I have the tie sewn, I'm gonna do a little bit of trimming. Now that I have it trimmed down, I'm just gonna flip my tie right side out. Once you have your tie flipped right side out, you wanna go ahead and give it a good press. All right, now that you have your tie pressed, the last thing you need to do is close up this opening. So you can grab your needle and thread and go ahead and do um, some slip stitches right here to close the opening. Okay, so I have my tie, I have the opening on that, all slip stitch closed. So now we need to create a thread loop on the outside of our jump tube for our tie to go through. I'm gonna do a thread chain loop. It's something that I learned from Miss Erica Bonker. She has an amazing video for it, and I'm gonna be sure to link it for you to check that out. So I'm going to start mine on the inside. Okay, so I have my thread. I just, I have the knot on the inside of the jumpsuit. And I am gonna create a little loop here. So now I have what looks like this and this. It's kind of hard to explain. That's why I'm gonna link that video. So what I'm gonna do is bring this down a little bit. I'm gonna bring, grab onto this thread and pull that through. until it kind of knots down here at the bottom. And I'm just gonna keep doing that. So I'm gonna pull through and grab, pull it down, and then it, it catches and knots down here with the other. And you just keep doing this little hand motion here until you get it. Let me get the last thread here. And you wanna make sure that it grabs on and knots down here. 
and I'm just going to reach through to grab that and bring it down so that it touches. I'm just going to keep doing this till it gets as long as I need it to be down here for this other marking. Okay, so I have it at a length that I'm happy with. So now I'm going to bring the needle all the way through to create a knot. And I'm going to take this end, I'm going to put it through this circle here that we transferred. So this is what my thread chain will look like. So I'm going to tie this off on the inside of the jumpsuit. All right, once you're all done doing your other thread loop on the outside of your jumpsuit, you'll be all done. Thank you all so much for joining me for another Sew With Me video. I really do hope that you all enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please leave them for me down below. I'll be more than happy to answer. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on your notifications, and I will see you in the next video. Blessings, everyone. Bye.